Hello, and welcome to Moments in History. I'm Linda Shenton Matchett, author, speaker, and history geek. While researching my stories, I unearthed tons of intriguing historical information that doesn't end up in my books, so I've created this channel so I can share these tidbits with you. I really appreciate you stopping by to watch. The Pack Horse Library Project was a Works Progress Administration program that delivered books to remote regions in the Appalachian Mountains between 1935 and 1943. Pack Horse librarians were known by many different names, including book women, book ladies, and pack saddle librarians. The project helped employ around 200 people and reached about 100,000 residents in rural Kentucky. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the Works Progress Administration, renamed in 1939 as the Works Projects Administration, was one of President Franklin Roosevelt's New Deal agencies. Established by presidential order on May 6, 1935, and headed by Harry Hopkins, the programs employed millions of job seekers, mostly men who were not formally educated, to carry out public work projects such as the construction of public buildings, roads, bridges, airports, housing, and schools. The largest single project of the WPA was the Tennessee Valley Authority, an electric utility corporation. The WPA's initial appropriation in 1935 was for $4.9 billion, which at the time was about 6.7% of the 1935 GDP. Between 1935 and 1943, the WPA employed 8.5 million people and at its peak in 1938 provided pay jobs for 3 million unemployed men and women, as well as youth in a separate division called the National Youth Administration. Hourly wages were typically kept well below industry standards. Interestingly, full employment, which was reached in 1942 and emerged as a long-term national goal around 1944, was not the goal of the WPA. Rather, it tried to provide one paid job for all families in which the breadwinner suffered long-term unemployment. Because of the Great Depression and a lack of budget money, the American Library Association estimated in 1936 that approximately one-third of all Americans no longer had reasonable access to public library materials. In particular, the ALA determined that illiteracy in eastern Kentucky, a rural, geographically isolated area, was around 31 percent, and a large percentage of the people in that area did not have access to books. The nation had been plunged into poverty, and Kentucky, a poor state made even poorer by a paralyzed national economy, was hardest hit. Hundreds of coal mines had been closed in response to the shutdown of na factories nationwide. Thousands of miners were out of work. Poor rocky soil made growing food difficult. Desperate times in the mountains. The state already trailed its neighbors in electricity and highways, and during the Depression, food, education, and economic opportunity were even scarcer for the Appalachians. While there was traveling libraries, which were created by the Kentucky Federation of Women's Clubs starting in 1896, the lack of roads and population centers in eastern Kentucky discouraged the creation of most public library services in these locations. In fact, 63 of Kentucky's 120 counties had no library services at all during the early 1930s, made worse by the fact that the traveling libraries were discontinued in 1933. The Pack Horse Library Project was headed by civil servant Ellen Woodward at a federal level. The project ran between 1935 and 1943, as mentioned previously. These book women were hired by the WPA and worked for around $28 a month which is about $495 in today's money, delivering books in the Appalachians via horseback on mule. The librarians delivered to individual homes and to schoolhouses. The WPA paid for the salaries of the supervisors and book carriers, but the books were all donated to the program. Communities were responsible for collecting the books, and parent-teacher associations and women's clubs throughout the country were key to helping raise money to purchase new books. Each local pack horse library had a clerk or head librarian who handled various library duties and four to ten book carriers who delivered books to mountain schools and homestead. The head librarian would process the donations at the headquarters, repair books, and get items ready to deliver. 
Librarians repurposed items like cheese boxes into card catalog files or license plates bent into the shape for bookends. They also repurposed old Christmas cards as bookmarks so people would be less likely to dog-ear pages. Most of the people involved in the Pack Horse Library project were women, and oftentimes the Pack Horse librarians were the only person in their firm family who was earning an income. Book carriers provided their own horses or mules, some of which were leased from for local farmers. Some routes were so steep that one bookwoman said she had to lead her horse across the cliffs. Other areas had deep water, and her feet sometimes froze into the stirrups. Another librarian chose to hike her 18 miles on foot after the death of her mule. One librarian had a very old mule and walked with her animal part of the route instead of riding. Over the course of a month, women would ride and walk the route at least twice, each route covering 100 to 120 miles a week, totaling an average of 4,905 miles. The book packs that the librarians carried typically held around 100 books, most of which were children's books. The books were rotated between locations and chosen based on the preferences of the library patrons. For adults, the collection focused on current events, history, religion, and biographies. The Bible was one of the most requested books, along with instructive literature. Other popular books were Robinson Crusoe and literature by Mark Twain, Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm and Gulliver's Travels. Picture books were a plus. The pictures helped non-readers figure out the story. Poetry was also often requested, with Robert Louis Stevenson's A Child's Garden of Verses at the top of the list. Men sought magazines like Popular Mechanics, and women requested Woman's Home Companion and Ladies' Home Journal, and other illustrated home magazines and books about health and parenting. Another unique aspect of the collection was the recipe and quilting pattern books that women created, writing down their favorites into binders, which were then shared throughout the area. The scrapbooks also contained cuttings from other books and magazines, and eventually there were more than 200 different books generated by patrons and librarians. Not allowed in the book women's sacks were thriller magazines like Love Story or True Story or detective magazines. The lending period for books was usually about a week. The Pack Horse Library Project not only distributed books, but also provided reading lessons. Librarians and bookwomen would also read aloud to the families. Librarians were also seen as educators, bringing new ideas into isolated areas. In order to do so, librarians had to deal with the community's suspicion of strangers and a hostility toward any outside influence. They managed to overcome the attitude to such a degree that one family was reported as refusing to move to a new county because it lacked a pack horse library service. The new war effort was putting people back to work, so projects tapered off. And in 1943, Franklin Roosevelt ordered the end of the WPA and with it, the pack horse librarian program. However, by 1946, motorized bookmobiles were on the move. Once again, books rode into the mountains, and according to the Institute of Museum and Library Services, Kentucky's public libraries had 75 bookmobiles in 2014, the largest number in the nation. All told, it is estimated that more than 100,000 individuals and 155 schools were served by this unique and worthwhile program. I hope you've enjoyed today's moment in history. If you want to learn even more, please stop by my blog found on my website, www.lindashentonmatchett.com, and please consider subscribing to my channel and click the bell icon to receive notifications of new episodes that generally release on the second and fourth Friday of each month. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great rest of your day.